Welcome everyone to my TL list. This is 1st of September when I'm doing this video right now about the civilizations, what we have. So, um, I can tell you that this patch pushed the civilization a little bit uh, closer to each other, right? Because let's say that that was some civilization that was like uh, in a hell nah, right? Like hell nah, I ain't gonna play with the save, right? So let's see, what do I think is going to the top right now? I think it's really clear for everyone is HRE is still one of the best with uh, Byzantine as well. The reason behind that, because HRE has the 40% getter rate. In Castle Age, you, the, you can get an upgrade that the 40% goes up to 50% getter rate. Which again, that's crazy that you can increase the 40% to 50%. I mean, if it's like 25% or 30% and you can increase it to 50%, I would say like, okay. But it's already insanely high, insanely good because it's 40%. And now, okay, let's do it. Now you have 50%, right? So it's like, they already have a good bonus. Let's throw another little thing over them and like, oh yeah, that's for 50% now. So HR with the getter speed, with the good unit composition they have in Feudal, the movement speed they have on the archers, like it's the same movement speed as the Japanese Yumi Ashigaru or a uh, Palace Guard, right? So the archers are insanely fast, the Manatons uh, really fast, Spearman really fast, so the infantry is really nice. I would really see another new infantry unit for the HRE and the OOTD as well. So yeah, not bad. Uh, Byzantine, they have the same thing. They have extra gathering speed. They gather two different resources from their farms, starting from the Dark Age. Uh, they have mercenary. They can answer everything. They they have better uh, Delhi elephants. If if you don't know what is the difference between a Byzantine and a Delhi elephant, you you should uh, watch one of my fun fact video about the elephants. So yeah, the Byzantine has all the mercenaries, and also they can use the royal. Uh, uh, cannon, a normal cannon from the French, using the special ability that gives 5 tiles extra range and 30% extra damage for one shot. So Byzantine has everything, all the tools, and I think they can beat most of the sieves as well with HRE. Now, let's see the next, uh, Malian. Whoo, guys, like, I'm not even joking. Malian with the second TC build. There are some civilization that can counter uh, Malian, like, let's say, Ottoman or uh, Mongol or um, HRE. But honestly, I don't think so. So let's say this is a, a Dark Age fight. And this is what people didn't really realize yet. So you are fighting against the Malian in Dark Age. And they are gathering gold from the pit mine, right? So they are receiving more and more. Both side making Spearman, 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 Donzo, Spearman, Donzo. But the more time you spend Dark Age uh, in Dark Age with the Malian, the more gold they will get, right? So we, I was testing like a Dark Age uh, fight between the Malian and the Mongol. And even though, let's say I aged up like uh, 15 or 20 seconds faster as Mongol, when the Malian aged up, he already had gold to build the second TC. So uh, you know what I mean. So even though I stayed in Dark Age longer, he has already a second TC when he gets to Feudal. So that's what people doesn't realize. Like so many people saying like, well, actually when the Malian player is, uh, you know, um, their TC costs gold now, it's actually a nerf for them. But it's not because if they stay longer in Dark Age, that means, and you stay longer in Dark Age, the Malian will already have the resources to build the second TC, which is going to be a really huge problem for you. And that's why I'm saying like Dark Age rush against the Malian, uh, the Malian who is protecting himself, will always, you know, he's going to get to the top of that. And also, if you don't rush Malian, they're going to build the TC at 4 minutes, 15 seconds. Now, what are you going to do with that? So, Malian... Um, has a huge uh, feudal potential as well. Really nice second TC. You don't need to, you know, think about anything else. They are great. English. I think English is still one of the best. Uh, insanely good late economy. Insanely good early economy. Uh, there are just some sieves that can counter it, but other than that, uh, I think still one of the best. Right. There, there is no question about that. Because they are late economy, the farms, as I said, that generating gold, 
even in early game, the forms are good. The king opening with the second TC, the white tower protecting everything. I think I think still one of the best. Rus. I don't think Rus changed that much. Like honestly with you guys, I can build Rus second TC much faster than before, which is crazy. I'm thinking about it. The reason behind that, because many things got changed, right? And um, you don't need to start with the hunting camin. You can start with the hunting camin, but you don't need to. So my fastest uh, second TC Rus was like <sighs> beat or f 4 minutes 10 seconds or 4 minutes 20 seconds. So insanely fast second TC that you can build with the Rus. Um, you can pro scout, you can um, rush castle, you can feudal aggression, you can do everything still. But what happened with the Rus that, let's say, for the beginner players, the Rus was hell now. Now, the Rus for beginner players is also good because you don't need to spend insane amount of micro, right? So I was fighting against like a Conquer 1 or Conquer 2 player, I think. Uh, he played Rus and I played Malian. And he did he did uh, really, really nice. Uh, if that player was playing with the old Rus, he would have like lo losing at first 10 minutes or 15. But now because the Golden Gate change, that you got the tickets much faster, which is insane, dude. Like Golden Gate is back on the many boys. Like I'm not even joking. Golden Gate is back. So Golden Gate, really nice. Uh, horse Archer meta back as well. People are spamming Horse Archers. The new AB is insanely good that you can make uh, cheap monks out of every um, monastery that you build. The monks that almost has 500 health. We're like, what the hell are gilded knights? Am I right? And these monks are not like heavy units or, or light. They're just monks. Now imagine that crossbow can't deal bonus damage against them, right? Because these are not heavy units. Like almost 500 health and not heavy unit. Now that's my favorite unit. All right, let's see the next. I think we can put the deli here. It's like good. I, I would not say they are like the best. They are not bad. The house of learning got much, much, much better. And um, the new upgrades, the extra movement speed for the war FN that always makes them the same movement speed as like a man at arm. There is like a little bit of uh, less movement speed, just, just like a 0, 0, 0. 0. 0.02 difference, I think, uh, between a war elephant and a man at arm when you upgrade the um, unique upgrade. And also you can get extra range on the archer and crossbow. I think that's really good for the daddy. Uh, compound defender is still good, but the house of learning people are trying out and oh, and dome of fate. Don't forget the dome of fate that got buffed as well. And I see already, uh, pro players, uh, semi pro players, uh, using the dome of fate and winning games. Cause it's actually insanely good. So we should we should not forget that that Dome of Fate is actually playable now. Thanks God, like Dome of Fate is just like back back in the day. Now it's playable. I don't know why they nerfed it so many times. Yeah, Dome of the Dome of the Fate is is back back on many boys. A bad seed. Now so many people are complaining about the eco wing is like bad, and now it got buffed. You know what I mean? Um, it's debatable if a bad seed best or good, but I'm gonna put it in good right now because many people are gonna say, well, it's not the best. In my eyes, a bad seed is is like should be here at the top, but but it's fine. So eco wing got buffed. Now you build farms almost as cheap as English, right? Okay, it's like 40, 46, 49 wood, something like that. So insanely cheap farms. Um, the trade wing got reworked as well. Now your traders have armor, right? In uh, feudal, there are like many, many, many things that uh, Abbas it got stronger camel archers as well, which I love because I love making feudal camel archers. Um, had a lot of changes, but the problem with the people is when they are thinking about these changes, they are not trying them out, right? They are not going to TC and uh, spamming camel archers because they are scared. But the, it's actually strong and it's really good. You don't need to go 3 TC with the economical wing. You already save a lot of resources by going 2 TC farms and houses and lumber camp and mining camp and all this economical stuff. You're already saving an insane amount of resource. I don't care that my archer has 10 extra health when I can just make 10 extra archer or 10 extra camel archer because how cheap I can build my economy up. It's the same with English and people does not realize you can play it like English. You just build farms because they are insanely cheap and you have also getter speed by the uh, golden age, right? 
Uh, you just unlock the level one and you already have faster gathering speed, which applies to farms as well. So you are like a mini English in feudal and you are like a stronger English in uh, castle with the farms. So that's why I'm saying that people need to realize that. I think it's not bad for me. I need to test more because uh, I tested these much, much more. But yeah, next one is going to be Zushi. Zushi is not insanely OP, but at least good. Um, People were scared to play on land maps until I started to show most of the more people that, hey, Zushi is, you know, absolutely decent. Uh, BC were trying out my build as well. Uh, we were talking about how good Zushi is, what they can do. And he was trying out build left to right. And more people are, are picking Zushi on land maps and not just chicken you all in, right? Uh, they are doing other stuff like uh, fast castle or uh, pro scout and now pro scout got better as well so yeah zushi was in my eyes always good on land map but now with the better pro scout with the more health on the palace guard in feudal so palace guard feudals are actually insanely better with the extra health the fast the cheaper upgrades for the ios the faster upgrades in the library so Zushi got a lot of good changes and I think it's good. It's good. Now, uh, this is a good question because I think uh, Ayubid is actually still better than the Abbasid in some part of the game. Not, not late game, but I think people are still struggling against um, Ayubid. Ayubid still has the stupid uh, villager wing, the growth. Uh, the trade wing got better, right? Oh, wait, sorry. Of, 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 the industry got better, so more people picking the industry as well. Which, in my eyes, that's that's just a trap. Sorry, but... Right? No, like I don't like the industry, okay? The industry, in my eyes, that's just a trap. You Yes, you get a second TC, but the growth still gives you 100 extra food on each berries and immediately gives 7 villager. What if you're getting feudal pushed? You can't pick the industry. How are you going to build your second TC while you are getting ram pushed in feudal? The feudal opponent. I think industry is still a trap. I, I don't think industry is good. The devs went into the wrong way with the industry. I million times suggested it would be good if the industry actually generates wood per minute. Example, in feudal, you will generate 50 wood per minute for like 6 minutes or 7 minutes. You non-stop get like, like 50 wood. 50 wood 50 wood 50 wood after let's say four minutes you already got 200 extra wood and and goes higher and higher and higher or maybe 75 wood or 100 wood per minute for five minutes so 500 wood but you get 100 extra wood every minute and in castle like 150 wood every minute uh, and in imperial you get 125 wood until the game was over, right? So non-stop 125 wood per minute or 150 or something, but the industry is a trap. Um, trade wing is nice. The Bedouin skirmisher and the Bedouin swordsman uh, got buffed. The dervishes got buffed as well. So they are like really good amount of buff on the Ayubid, but the weapon speed is still shit. So if you pick Ayubid, you can go wrong. Uh, next one, OOTD. I don't think it's good or best. I think it's decent. Um, they buffed a little bit. Now you make uh, villagers faster and um, and the burger is stronger as well, right? So you make uh, spearmen even cheaper and faster, manatum cheaper and faster. So I think the burger became will, be, will become a meta for OOTD. But there need to be more changes to the military as well, like 10% extra health to every unit or something like this. Or maybe even more cheaper burger, I don't know. But something needs to be more... Uh, right now it's decent. It's not in good or best, but it, it's decent. It's like, all right. I would not pick on a tournament maybe, but that's all right. Now, Ottoman, um, no, Ottoman needs work. Ottoman is like, the landmarks are so unbalanced, right? I mean, their Imperial landmark got a little bit of buff, which is nice. But for some reason, I don't feel comfortable with Ottoman. Like, everything is all over the place. And I think it's the reason behind that, because the Vizier points are so weird. So the more you play, the more you understand that the Vizier points are just... They should be the bonus for the Ottoman, but at the same time, it's like, that's all right. You can play some weird stuff with them, but I feel like the Ottoman Vizier points, the landmark need to be reworked. Uh, I mean, the H3 landmark. 
The feudal landmarks are a little bit weird as well how they work. I think the food landmark needs a change. That where you put the food landmark, the, the berries actually um, around the landmark, the berries uh, gather faster as well. Then yeah, that's that's a better landmark. But right now everyone is picking the trade landmark because the resource permanent you can get from the trade landmark is insanely high compared to the food landmark. And if you pick the trade bag, you can get generate 336 gold per minute. 336 gold per minute. Yes, you sacrifice 10 population, but the 10 population give you 336 gold per minute until you take those traders out of the landmark. So you're gonna always have, let's say you need to pull your villagers back from your gold. Uh, you just have the trend traders inside the market and they can do anything unless they destroy the landmark, right? So I, I think Ottoman is all over the place. The Ottoman tries to be this or that. Their late game is insanely strong, but it needs work. It's not a bad sieve, so I can easily put it here, but it needs work. You know what I mean? So it's not a bad sieve, but needs a little bit of more work, need more cooking on that. And I hope devs with the next patch, they will, they will cook a little bit more with the uh, Ottoman or some. Just do something with the Ottoman, please, because the H3 landmark picking is awkward. They have only one H3 landmark. So yeah, yeah, Mongol have now more option. Uh, Mongols, I think it became decent. I would not say it's good or best. Ah, maybe good, but I mean, Byzantine, let's put it on good because I think it's better than OTD. So let's put it on uh, good. Uh, French and Jean d'Arc, I think it's decent right now. And uh, Chinese is good and Japanese is good. Now, Japanese should be in best, but it got nerfed in castle. So let's see, why did I put French and Jean d'Arc into um, decent? Well, honestly, uh, with all of you, Jean d'Arc and French was like, hell nah, hell nah, right? But the Chamber of Commerce um, change actually helped a lot on both of the civilization. Um, I tried, as I was watching pro players or BC or other players trying Chamber of Commerce, and it's much, much stronger because you get the traders out much, much faster and the upgrade cheaper as well, right? So every economic upgrade cheaper. You can do the pro scout uh, as well because the pro scout got cheaper as well. So there are like many, many things that got changed. I think they are decent. They are pickable. You can win games with them. But other than that, I must say, like looking at this right now, it's like the game has, the game is way much more balanced. The Khan Hunters did help the Mongols a lot. Um, the French Chamber of Commerce did help a lot. Chinese, like, Chinese, it's like, it's good. It's like, it's good. Is it the best? No. It's like, it's like this. Chinese are the best next to each other. Uh, Japanese, it was best, but the floating gate got an insane amount of nerf. Like they nerfed it left to right everywhere where you can like imagine it got nerfed. So the floating gate doesn't generate that much of a gold, like instant amount of gold loss uh, from the floating gate. So I think the Japanese right now is good. And uh, yeah, for me in um, September, this is my September TR list for the civilizations. Uh, honestly with you, the devs are doing their best job, even though their communication is equal to... Nothing, right? The most horrible communication from a dev team you can ever get. But 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 even though they are ass at uh, communicating with the community, uh, they are not providing any uh, roadmap or anything like that, right? That they are working on. <laughs> they are really good at their job of making the sieves are more and more balanced. Cause I can I can't put anything into the hell no. Like I can play all the civilization and have fun with them, enjoy them, and also I would not feel like oh shit, I'm playing against HRE, so I'm gonna lose. But we, I have done with the fate, so now I can fight against the HRE. So that's what I'm saying that I don't feel it's like an instant loss immediately. So yeah, the devs cooked really nice and uh, I like it. I like it how the devs cooked the game uh, into this stage where. Uh, Everything just got way much more balanced. But let's give another few weeks, another month, and let's revisit this tier list in the next month. 
if my view changed on this or not but so far after all the testing i think i'm the only player who is testing the most stuff and finding the most bugs as well uh in the community so yeah that's my tier list for this month let's see you next month thank you so much for watching see you guys next time Woo!